Alright guys, so here we are for the Japanese Grand Prix. This is F1 2006, F1 Championship Edition, as you guys know it to be, on the PlayStation 3. This will be the penultimate episode of the entire series before we get stuck into F1 2016 properly. So, uh, second last race, um, I'll be looking to make a mark um, in these final two races of the season and potentially secure myself a drive with a top team before we start season four in the new year. Without further ado, let's get into the Japanese Grand Prix. Welcome to Suzuka Japan for the penultimate qualifying session in the Formula One calendar. So we've squeezed through qualifying one there or thereabouts. I only put in uh, like two laps there, so uh, there's definitely room for improvement there. But um, like I said before, Japan isn't one of those strong tracks for us. It seems just like last season, it's one of those ones that favours the AI. Uh, when you come to a lot of these tracks on F1 Championship Edition, your success depends hugely on how the AI are. It's kind of like predetermined before you get to the weekend. So it really just depends on whether it's an OP track for the AI or not, uh, how well you'll do. But we are in a quicker car. I have a little bit more experience with this game. So fingers crossed, we can be uh, a little bit more quicker than what we showed this time last season at this track. So... Heading into qualifying two, I'm actually not too sure if we'll make it out of that session. Ooh, that was skating through the final chicane there. At the end of qualifying one, we did a 35.2, I believe. What is this lap going to be in Q2? 34.9, so we instantly beat that lap. And um, I don't know why I didn't keep going, because I'm fueled for another lap. Oh, no. Is that a Williams? Is that Mark Webber? I think it was. No, it's a Toro Rosso. Actually, no, I think that was a Red Bull. So I'm not too sure who that was, but that is one less contender for us to topple in this second qualifying session. It could prove to be very beneficial to us because, like I said, it's going to be very, very tough to get ourselves out of this qualifying two session. First lap in our second run, it's a 35-0. That's not good enough. If you look at the way I'm driving, it's pretty well at the moment. It's just there's no lap time attached to it. I just mean it's not reflected well in the uh, the overall standings of the lap time. So, yeah, like I said in Season 2, Suzuka feels really rewarding to drive. And it feels like, you know, you're really making the most through the corners. But, again, the lap time just doesn't seem to be there. Oh, three tenths up, though. I'll take that. So three tenths up in the middle sector, let's come across the line and see if we do improve. 34.2! Now we've got no more fuel left to uh, to finish off this lap, so we're going to return back to the garage and possibly get one... No. Well, no, that's it. That's the end of our session. We did not have any more time and we didn't have any more fuel to complete that run. So it's 12th place for the Japanese Grand Prix. I said it would have been very tough to escape this session and uh, would you look at that, we are the second casualty to drop out in this uh, second part of qualifying. We'll continue with session three of qualifying in a few moments. 34.271, we're very close to Heidfeld there, but I would love to know just how close, how much more time we would have needed to find just to squeak in the 10th place. When you come to the, to the midfield battles, it often is only separated by like a 10th or two, maybe even less, so... Yeah, I, I feel like we only just missed out on a qualifying three place. So there we have it. From 10th to pole, the grid order looks like this. So Montoya gets pole from Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa in third place. Alonso P2, he's looking very dangerous for the win in this Japanese Grand Prix. Like I said, he's a major rival for us in the, uh, the driver standings. Um, and it's not looking good for us. We're literally going to have to hope for a retirement for Alonso and us to move up a few places to even get inside the points in order to close the gap. So we're in the mid-pack in this race, um, so that means it's going to be a lot of battling in this one. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. We're, we're not fighting for the championship or anything like that. Ultimately, we want to have some fun in these last two races and starting where we are, I think we're going to get plenty of it. It's time for the race. Hello and welcome to Suzuka for what promises to be another exciting dose of Formula 1 action. This is the Japanese Grand Prix. Here we go guys, second last race on F1 Championship Edition. I am really, I'm actually going to miss this game. It's been a lot of fun um, taking you through this series over the last you know, few months. 
But um, after these last two races are done, it's time to move on to bigger, better things. F1 2016 is coming, and it's only a matter of days away. Always makes me nervous when I start down the order on F1 Championship Edition. It's quite hard to overtake, and it's hard to overtake well. I don't have the overall accuracy in placing the car where I want to, as what I do on some other games on the wheel. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's just going to be so difficult. Let's see, 10 red lights, and away we go for this Japanese Grand Prix. Is it going to be a good start? I think it is. The McLaren got off to a pretty slow one. We're going to go up the inside of Fizikella into turn one. Let's not center anyone into turn one. And uh, I think we've made it through quite nicely. Good start so far. But I'm looking to move up even more places. We need to secure ourselves even more points for this race. I think that's Felipe Massa. Completely gone. He got shoved out wide by someone. Turn four. It's Barrichello. That incident certainly has not Oh, someone else has gone too. Is that my teammate? Yes, it is. What are these AI cars doing today? I remember, I think it was season one or season two, there was a massive crash on the uh, opening straight on the first lap. And it's followed suit today. The AI very erratic in this penultimate race here in Japan. First lap done. We're in P6 at the moment. Michael Schumacher, 1.2 seconds in front of us. I feel like the controversy in this race is only just getting started. The engineer predicted a few retirements in this race, so let's hope that some of those go our way. That's a huge impact into the S curve. It's Montero as well. Oh wow. So Coulthard had the engine troubles in qualifying and then he gets tangled up with Montero in the S section in the first sector. Unbelievable weekend for the Red Bulls and there's oil flags. According to our computers, the tires are accumulating some wear now. Just keep an eye on it. They look fine to me. Surprisingly, the rear tyres are starting to go off, and I always thought Suzuka was one of those um, front tyre heavy wear tracks, especially on the front left, but apparently nothing in the way of tyre wear, according to the graph so far. Um, I think we're coming in on lap 4 or 5 for another set of tyres, so very short stints here, and as you can see, these guys are all over me, Trulli and Fizikella. We're basically a sitting duck on the straights. We're running 80% um, and 90% re respectively, on the uh, the front wing and rear wing settings, so yeah, straights are not our friend today. Alonso pits, and so too does Rosberg. So we're coming in on the next lap. That's two laps later than the likes of Alonso and Rosberg. So if I could stretch that out another lap, that'd be three laps advantage we have on lower fuel. So. I don't know whether Alonso's coming in for a two-stop in this race. I doubt it, but he's got a long way to go on that final set of tyres to the finish. Here comes Fizzy. Is he going to go for it? Yes, he is. I'm going to have to leave him space. And there he goes. He doesn't hold me up, so kudos to Fizzy. If that was Codemasters AI, especially on the older games, then he would have held me up quite considerably after going up the inside there, and we would have both been frustrated. That's the fastest you've been through sector one in this session. And that is exactly why you want to stay out as long as you can on low fuel. And into the pits now for our one and only pit stop. I'm going to be very eager to see where we rejoin in this race, whether we jump the likes of Alonso and Rosberg. I'd like to be in front of Rosberg, possibly. I hope that they got caught up in traffic, but I sincerely doubt that. 8.3 second stop, that's fairly decent. We should retain position on those around us, and we do emerge in front of Fisichella. There goes all... No, that's Rosberg. So like I said, I was, I was hoping to be close to Rosberg, and we definitely are. We've made up some ground. Where is Alonso? He's P5, so he's jumped us as well. So for the remainder of this race, the goal is to beat Rosberg. If I can just get within the slipstream of Rosberg, I should be fine. And I should be able to stay with him. It's just a case of getting close enough to him without um, allowing Fisichella to get too close. I don't want to battle with him and get held up. That is good time made up through the final chicane. And now, I feel like we're close enough. I feel like we're within that striking distance that we need in order to attack Rosberg. So... Watch out for us on the next lap or two. We should be able to get him. 
I said next lap or two, not next corner or two. Rosberg very slow through this first sector. Come on. I'm just not... I feel like my car isn't quick enough in the right areas. Like, we need to be strong on this straight, get a good exit off the spoon curve, and then be close enough to attack Rosberg into that final chicane. That's where the AI is slow in terms of braking. But I'm just not close enough to him. I need more straight line speed. If I can have my time over, I'd definitely compromise on the setup, give myself more straight line speed. And then, maybe, we'd be able to attack Rosberg a little bit. It's going to have to come in this first sector. Ugh. Just look at how far away he is. Literally, nothing he can do from this far back. Hey, <laughs> I got a touch there through the mid corner. Here comes Fizikella. Rosberg is getting away, unfortunately. I think it's going to be all about holding this position now, which is very unfortunate. Um, it seems as the stints go on, we seem to lose a lot of pace. Look at those three cars behind me. Some Three of the quickest cars in the 2006 Formula 1 season. And we are holding them at bay for P6 in this Grand Prix. Two laps left to go after this one. Keep an eye on your car condition indicator. The tyres are showing signs of wear and this will affect grip. I don't give a crap about my tyres at this point. Oh, that's a scary moment if I ever saw one. Frank Renner Montoya has begun his final lap of the race. No. Oh, damn it. Okay, so there goes Fizikella. I've got to dive bomb this guy into the final chicane. No, no, no. Well, that didn't work out. Well, somehow he managed to maintain position. But there goes Fizikella. I had to go for that. Otherwise, yeah, he would have been gone in that race. So, it's P7 at the moment. Here comes the McLaren. Please, no. That's it. Montoya takes first place. Michael Schumacher will take second place. Alright, so that's the, uh, the winner of the race decided. It's still not over, though, for seventh place in this Grand Prix. Deep under brakes into the final chicane, and there's nothing really that Raikkonen can do on the run up to the line to steal seventh place from us. So, in the end, it's going to be two points in the Japanese Grand Prix. What started off to be a really good day kind of turned average a little bit towards the end there. But a few more points, I can't complain. This really is a magnificent circuit, and it always brings us a fascinating race. It's an incredible challenge for any Grand Prix team to get the car balanced around here. And that makes for fantastic action and plenty of surprises. Driver of the day, I'd say, would have to go to Nico Rosberg. You don't normally see the Williams that high up, so for him to be challenging the likes of Alonso and Button very early on in that race, you could see that the pace, the lack of pace, really showed as the Grand Prix went on there. And uh, he finished, what, 20 seconds off the pace? So, But uh, yeah, to get away with 7th place after we really did not have the pace of a 7th place running car... I think I'll take that. Driver standings, Massa 107 leads Michael Schumacher 106. One point separating those two drivers heading into the finale of this Season 3 championship. And uh, yeah, like I said, I think fifth place it's going to be for us in the drivers and also in the constructors as well. Still nothing in the way of recruitment apart from the uh, potential renewal of our contract for next season at Toyota. So uh, it's going to have to go down till after the final race of this season to see where we might end up for season four of F1 2006 career mode. Guys, that has been the penultimate episode of this series. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it so far. Like I said before, this has been a very enjoyable uh, series for myself to record. This is such a unique game and I think that's why I've really enjoyed um, doing this over the long term of, um, of this series. And I think that's why I did so well initially when I started uploading these videos. So I can only say a massive thank you to all you guys for watching the series and continuing to support it. Um, that's been it for today. The championship is going to go right down to the wire for both the Ferrari drivers and I'm very eager to see how that one might turn out. So until then guys, the season finale of F1 2006 career mode. It's going to be an absolute cracker and uh, hopefully we can go for the race win there and maybe spoil Ferrari's party. That's it for today. Until my next video guys, I'll see you next time.